Welcome to the Food Scene, an instructional web series on how to make some delicious dishes. This is episode two. We're gonna make some roasted tomato soup with rajas and queso fresco. Let's first run through the ingredients. We're gonna need olive oil, beef broth, poblano chilies, queso fresco, uh, tomatoes, salt, pepper, garlic, and onion, of course. Quick note on the ingredients. I used chicken broth instead of beef broth because I didn't have any beef broth on hand. So yeah, still works though. Some other quick notes here. Uh, obviously always wash your hands, make sure your counters are clean, make sure before you start using any vegetables that you are washing them. I am not showing these things in the video because I feel that would be sort of monotonous. But yes, always do that. Also, um, for any of the, you who want suggested amounts for the ingredients, I will leave those amounts in the video description below. Back to the food scene. Okay, so we're gonna start off by bringing in this onion. I'm sure I was crying as usual while I break these down. Um, if you want some tips on how to not cry while cutting up onions, check out episode one of the food scene where we made uh, cheddar broccoli chowder. And uh, this time we're not chopping them, we're slicing. Just doing thin slices. Let's uh, fast forward a bit here. super fast slicing. And yeah, we're just making sure we have a bunch of sliced white onion. Next, we're gonna move on to the garlic. We're gonna do a mince on the garlic right there. I just got rid of some of the uh, nastier outsides of the garlic. And yeah, here we go, we're just gonna mince it. Uh, this is kind of a, it's not a perfect representation of the knife motion you wanna use, because I'm not a professional chef, but this is sort of what you want when you're mincing or chopping things. Uh, let's fast forward through some of this garlic stuff. There it is. Got a nice mince going there. Although if you want to leave it a little bigger, it's okay too. Um, because honestly, with dinner items, there's a lot of room for you know experimentation and occasional mistakes. Um, desserts where you really want to be precise. I've always said cooking is more of an art and then making dessert is more of a science. So here's the queso fresco next. We're going to do a little dice on it. Uh, this is almost just like it's not going directly in the soup. It'll be more something we put on top of the soup. And I am struggling a little bit. I don't know why I did that, but here we go. So yeah, just doing a nice dice on it. Um, yeah, just bringing down the queso fresco. Super easy. It's super soft. Uh, really easy to handle. Now we're going to turn the oven on to broil because we're going to roast the poblano chilies. Here I am opening the oven. Um, and uh, it's going to get insanely hot. Alright, next steps. Uh, I'm going to move up the oven rack a little because um, we want the chilies to be as close to the the oven broiling device thing as much as possible. I'm not sure what exactly you call that, but the, the hot parts of the oven. Um, you can't really tell in this video, but my hands are on fire. Um, this oven is so hot when you set it to the broiler. And if you leave it open, it just continues to circulate to try to hit up to the, get back up to that high point, um, which is helpful, but it also means that it's like a bajillion degrees so, yeah, careful, because you might burn your hands. All right, so now here are the chilies um, roasting. Now, this is exactly what I was talking about. Uh, it is so hot. Like, I think I actually did burn myself at one point during shooting this. Uh, thankfully, it wasn't severe. But, yeah, be very careful when you're turning these chilies. You're really looking to char them, so they're going to get, like, a little... Not You don't want them black, but they're going to get a little... Uh, colored um, as the skin starts to sort of heat up and you'll see like little bubbles from the skin of the chili. 
Um, yeah, just be very careful when you're turning these things in the oven. Um, so here I am still, oh there, yeah, you can see the skin there for a hot second, how different it looks now. And what you're going to want to do is get these chilies to sweat. So you're going to take a plastic Ziploc bag and throw them in there when you're done uh, broiling them, roasting them, I should say. And yeah, here I am, turning the chilies, making sure they're done, as done as possible. Um, and yeah, I can't emphasize enough how hot this oven is. It is. It doesn't look like it, but every time I stick my hand in there, it's like a sauna times two, three? I don't know what multiplier I would use there, but yeah, it's very hot. As you can see, the chili starting to cook. And so yeah, we're going to put them into this plastic bag so they can sweat. Um, and that will make them very easy to peel. Well, it wouldn't be roasted tomato soup without roasting some tomatoes. So we're going to throw those in the broiler in a, uh, an oven-proof pan to catch the juices from the tomatoes. That'll take about six minutes, but you want to check it to make sure you don't overcook them. They get black on, on the top side. That's what we're going for, is you want the top and bottom kind of black, charred. And I uh, am struggling to turn them to the other side. But yeah, there they are. Going to turn them, throw them back into the oven. Uh, it's still on broil, by the way. We haven't changed the oven temperature. I'm just making some adjustments there. And then yeah, I'm going to let that broil. Once again, that's going to take around six minutes, but be sure to check. So now we're taking the tomatoes out of the oven. Uh, you can see they're black on the bottom as well. And the reason we do this is because it makes them very easy to peel later on so we can get rid of the skin. But they're going to be too hot to peel initially. So quick note here, I didn't show this in the video, but obviously, obviously you want to turn off your oven for just basic safety reasons. Uh, yeah. All right, so with that said, back to the food scene. Let's move back to the poblanos, which have sweated. And now I'm just peeling off the skins of the poblanos. And these are how we're going to get our rajas for the soup. Uh, it's actually incredibly easy if you broil them long enough. The skin will just kind of come right off. Um, you'll barely have to do anything. And yeah, here I am peeling the skin. Um, the texture is like a touch slimy, but you get used to it pretty fast. So uh, we've jumped forward in time here a little bit, still peeling the poblanos, making sure that I'm getting all the skins off uh, so we can move on to cutting off the tops and coring and seeding them, which is what I'm doing right now. So here I am cutting the tops off. You can see all the seeds right there. I'm actually going to core and seed these off camera, uh, but they're so soft you can just wipe them off uh, all the veins and the, the seeds. You can wipe them off into the compost. And now I'm going to cut thin strips off of these chilies, which will be the rajas for the soup, as I mentioned earlier in the video, like five seconds ago. And yeah, let's fast forward through some of this. Um, here I am slicing them. I've always loved the rajas. Um, in this soup, they're great, but they're also great in like enchiladas suizas uh, and any number of things, really. Um, just an awesome, awesome ingredient. All right, so now we're moving on to peeling the tomatoes. Uh, you want to wait a little bit because they're going to be really hot when you first take them out of the, the oven. So, uh, yeah, I've waited a little bit, and now we're just trying to peel them. Although I can tell they're hot because I am pretty lightly handling them. So yeah, let's fast forward through some of this. And uh, yeah, this is where the soup gets its flavor from the roasted tomato. So moving on, we're now going to blend the tomatoes um, until we get kind of a nice, uh, I don't know how to describe it, just sort of brothy texture, kind of like a tomato broth. And uh, from this point forward, we're going to turn up the a burner on the stove to moderately high heat and throw some olive oil in there. 
And we're going to want that olive oil to be pretty hot, but we don't want it to be smoking. From here, we're going to add the white onion. Uh, and we're going to want to cook it, stirring occasionally for about five minutes or so. So after those five minutes have passed, we're going to add the garlic and stir it in for about one minute. Another quick note, in the initial ingredient list, I forgot to mention you need oregano for this soup. So fingers crossed you have some on hand. Uh, this next step is going to be where we incorporate the oregano. And now back to the food scene. So after you got your garlic, you add your oregano in here and quickly stir that in. Uh, just to give it a little extra flavor. And now we're going to add the rajas. Uh, make sure we get them all in there out of the bowl because this is like the best stuff. And then we're going to stir in the rajas. Uh, there's no specified time here, just until they're hot. So from there, we're going to add the uh, tomato puree, tomato broth puree, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and. We're going to want to incorporate that into the rajas, onions, oregano, garlic mix. And we are going to want to bring that up to a simmer. Um, for those of you who don't know, a simmer is sort of like a very mild boil. It's just like slightly boiling. And uh, once it's simmering, we're going to want it to simmer for around seven minutes. So here it is simmering. Uh, while it's simmering for those seven minutes, you're going to want to see the soup thicken a little bit. And then we're going to add the beef broth. In this case, chicken broth, because I didn't have any beef broth. And then uh, we're going to incorporate the broth. And we're going to want to bring that to a boil. From there, we're going to want it to boil. And uh, we're going to want to stir frequently until it thickens. Uh, which will be about three minutes. After those three minutes have passed, we're going to season the soup with salt and a little pepper if you like, but uh, salt at the least, at the very least, I should say. So yeah, you can see it seasoning here. And then uh, the soup is pretty much ready to eat at that point. So let's see the, the final product here. There it is. Add your fresh cheese from way back, and we're good to go. That's episode two, guys. Roasted tomato soup with rajas. Um, as always, be on the lookout for more episodes. Like and subscribe if you want. I hope these dishes find you well at any time.